Joy, are you there? Hi. Hey, Joy, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good. Oh, you're up north. I am. Nice, all right. Are we the only two here? I, I, think, I think so, I'm trying to, trying to i am trying to steady this ah, that's not gonna work uh, how you doing i'm ready just came back from being away on vacation did a whole bunch of family stuff it's exhausting go back to work tomorrow there we go i think that's as good as it's gonna get all right uh <clears throat> so let me get my so i think tomorrow night there's a meeting for the yep. critters and creatures yep yep awesome seven o'clock if you want to come yeah i think andrea is going to pick me up okay good and just trying to get set up here for uh minutes <laughs> Hey, Monty. Oh. Hey there, big boy. <laughs> Hello. Hey, handsome. It's like I know that voice, but I don't see her. Right, right. There's a lot to look at around here, so. I bet there is. Yeah. I bet. So, so we how were... are you, Doug? Doing all okay. How about you? Good. Are you enjoying retirement? Oh, yeah. Today was the first day of school. Look at this face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it was the first day of school. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> the only reason now yeah, is you know it's the traffic, because that's about it. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, what are you me? doing, Chris? I'm trying to put the host key in. I can't find the host key thing. Which doesn't matter as long as we don't get you get meeting bombed. The host key doesn't actually the host key doesn't actually do anything, except help me like knock off people like like a uh, whack a mole if they come in. Yeah, like we had. Remember that a couple of times. Time, so you know, but yeah, <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. All right, seven o two. Tracy said she'll uh, be here about uh, seven ten, I believe. Let's wait for Joy to come back, and I guess we'll get going. Can you hear me okay? I'm yep. here. Yeah, all right. Yep. There she's there. Yeah. Oh, all right. Hello. Hey, hey Marie, how, are you? how are you? Hey there. Back to the real world. There it is. Oops. Is that what it is? I yeah, guess so. Say whatever that is. <laughs> All right, everybody ready to go? I got no response. <laughs> everybody ready to go? Like, what's that? Yeah, what? <laughs> Hang on, give me one sec. All right. There's Tracy. We're hanging out in her back porch. Fantastic. Maybe we'll see some birds behind you. Woo. Hello. Hey, Are you there? Can you hear us, Trace? Can you hear me? Sure yeah. can. Sure can. Okay. We got one who's been, all right, Emery's there. I don't know why it's so low. Hold on. The volume's up. I'm a ding. Anyway, let me try this. Okay. <laughs> what the cord? All right. Oh, uh, way better. Everyone's good. All right. Three, Thank two, you. one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the, uh, I guess, September 7th edition of the Albion Cultural Exchange Committee meeting, and today's meeting is going to be the best one yet. Uh, I don't know, they say that on a podcast I listen to. Uh, so we're here, um, a lot of stuff going on, excited to be here, um, you know, have everybody on board, there's a big show coming up, I can feel the energy starting to like teeter and stuff going around, so that's all super exciting. 
bum that the summer's over. Uh, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, so we're going to start off, uh, you know, standard issue. Uh, we'll start off with our agenda, item number one, uh, which is review and approval of previous meeting minutes. Um, I checked my email. I don't know. Did we send out meeting minutes last time? Uh, I did not I go so. to the last meeting. Okay. All right. So we, so, so we did. Okay. So I, I don't know if somebody did minutes, but I was not there. At, I think the last meeting, there wasn't one in what, there wasn't one in August or July. So in June, I think was the one I didn't go to. Okay. So, so no meeting minutes. Um, what do you call it? We'll figure that out later uh, and get them to people. And at such time that minutes uh, appear, um, we will distribute them to people. Uh, what do you call it? And, uh, and take a vote on them, but we can't vote on something that doesn't exist. Um, not, uh, not the end of the world. We'll, we'll, we'll make it through. Uh, so item number one, we're, uh, now officially done with, uh, item number two, uh, sadly, uh, Donna Murphy, uh, resigned from the committee. Um, I think she's having some, um, some personal challenges, uh, like health wise and stuff. But, uh, but honestly, I really don't know. Um, that's basically all that was said to me. She sent, uh, an email, um, and uh, I sent her back a note and I thanked her for her time. I thanked her for her efforts, her opinions. You know, uh, committee members are hard to come by. And, uh, you know, she kind of came out of the blue. Um, and so we appreciate everything that she did and definitely let her know that. Uh, she even, you know, she was on her second term, I think. Um, and, you know, it's just so goddamn hard to show up sometimes. And a lot of people can't do it. And, and she showed up a lot. So uh, I definitely let her know uh, that, you know, we were appreciative for her efforts. And, uh, you know, I wish her well uh, to reach out to us with anything. And if I find out any uh, any further news, uh, you know, I'll let you know. Uh, I don't think it's like appropriate to send any kind of gift or anything at the moment. Uh, I've been monitoring the situation. Uh, but, you know, if, if, if such time that comes up, I'll represent, uh, represent us with, uh, you know, some sort of something, just letting them, you know, know that we care. Um, that's item number two. Would anyone like to add to that, comment to that, say anything? No, I'll, I'll just put in the minutes that the committee thanks Donna for her service and, and, wish, and wishes her well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so up next, we've got a building maintenance. There's a bunch of items in here. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on tonight, so um, I'm excited about the fact that there's a show coming up and there's a lot of dates on there, uh, big commitment out there, and so I think we're going to be talking to each other, so I'm going to hit the tree chops tonight on a lot of things, and since the summer has been going on and, and we haven't really been together, um, you know, I think for tonight's thing and for, to appreciate everybody's time and the fact that you're with your families, We'll buzz through it sort of at a treetops level. And then I hope to in the next month and uh, talk to people individually about stuff. Um, and then we can come back and, and do sort of more of a, a group deep dive on some of these things. So I just want to preface, um, you know, everything tonight because there's just so many topics uh, that are out there that we don't want to get, you know, stuck in the weeds. I try to keep this, my, my goal, I think that keeps everyone happy is about an hour or less. Um, and then we can supplement that as need be. So uh, that being said, um, KMA Associates, they're doing our um, accessibility audit. Uh, I think it's in my email now. I've been talking to them a lot lately and uh, sending pictures and, and doing stuff and going through it. I can say that I think it looks fabulous and that you will have a copy of it within the coming days. Like I said, I believe it's in my email now. I sort of start coming through. Um, unfortunately, I just didn't have any time to uh, get it out to everybody yet. I know roughly what it says, but I don't know what the one today says. Like I know some of the things that were gonna be fixed. Um, the long and short of it is they analyze like all the accessibility stuff. And uh, I believe the recommendation is for what they call a sloped walkway out front. And um, they go through all the, the motions of the laws and describing why and who and what. And here's five other options you could do. And here's why this one makes the most sense. When we get to things like elevators, they're represent they're, uh, in the report, you'll see that they mention, I believe, a thing called a Lula, which is like it's like an elevator light. Um, and it's to get between floors and it's much more cost effective than say a five, $600,000 elevator. Um, it yeah. meets most of our requirements um, and can be done. And I think the number for this thing comes in the tens of thousands of dollars and not in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But I'll let the report uh, you know, speak to that. I do know that there's some really cool color coding talking about our accessibility phasing. And it talks about like doing like our front door and then going to these Lula things and then developing out the second floor. So uh, there's a lot of good data in there and I will get that to you in the, in the next uh, couple of days. It's a thick read. It's like 20 pages. The first two versions of it that I read and sort of work with them on 
I had to digest them for like a week and a half to just even figure, get myself grounded in it. Um, but at the end of the day, it basically recommends one type of accessibility for the front um, and one one for uh, elevator type stuff. And, and they, they go through all the emotions of, of checking things out. So uh, it's a good read and you will have it in your hands soon. So without going deep into it, does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. Uh, you will have it in your hands in the next couple of days, if not tonight or tomorrow. Uh, next item, correspondence with the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, about our concerns and uh, conversation requests. I sent this out to everybody. I sent a letter. Uh, the first version of what's going to happen behind us uh, was revealed to the Zoning Board of Appeals about a month ago. Um, we were not notified. I don't know if we were supposed to. I don't even know if it was a formal hearing. I just read a newspaper article about it. Um, I'm also really good friends with our, our neighbors next door, um, Ralph Penny, who owns Ralph Penny and um, his partner's name, who, who own the building with the green facade. They weren't notified. Um, I don't, it's not really a crisis, uh, just we weren't notified. Uh, and so I read the article, saw what they talked about. I have not seen any of their plans, although other people, and I don't know if they've been released publicly or if they were just released to that board. Uh, but I made a, a statement and you, you read all the statement and just basically, you know, declared that we're here. We've been developing the neighborhood for eight years um, and just identified, you know, I think all the critical information uh, rather than repeat the letter. I'll just sort of throw it out there. I think if, if you haven't had the opportunity to read it, uh, go ahead and read it. Um, I, I did talk to uh, Amy Wall and the Zoning, Zoning Board of Appeals before I sent it just about the idea that we needed to send it and you know, um, and she agreed and put it together. And then I proofed it a little bit with her and, and um, a few other people in town, uh, a few other business leaders and stuff, uh, just to make sure that little sanity check and then we sent it out. Um, so that's out there. Uh, so Chris, they, yeah. have, have, have these people actually bought the building? Is this actually yes. a thing? They bought the building last year for like just under $4 million. And this is their first, I don't even know that it was a formal presentation. They basically went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and said, hey, you know, Brian McGill goes there. He represents everybody and says, hey, I represent the new owners of the building. It cleared, uh, the transaction cleared last about a year ago, maybe so, six months and, ago. and so they want to put apartments in there? Um, I can't speak Condos to what or whatever you want to call it. I can't speak to that because I wasn't provided any information. I just read a news story that said that they provided information to the Zoning Board of Appeals and that it had, you know, condos and this and that or whatever, but I haven't provided any information, so I can't really comment on it at all other than the fact that a news story was written about it. We haven't been provided any documentation, and as an abutter, that's a concern, but as people who've been developing in the neighborhood, that's a concern, but the real specific concern that the letter focuses on is that we have a right of way to the rear entrance there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and we've done work with architects already. Yeah. You know, we have thousands of dollars in vision That could blow us research. up. Well, it can't, and that's the, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, yes and no, like you can't because we have a right of way, so we need to speak up really quick. And not only do we have a right of way, um, uh, the guys next door, so we're 911, 1315 with the green front, that's Ralph Penny's building. He has a right of way. He's the one who actually researched and got all the records as we were doing this about the right of way. It's been to the records office. I mean, he could speak to it at length and he's being asked to do a lot of stuff. And so there's another item on here. I'll just mention it right now that, and we'll skip it when we get to it. But I attended a meeting with the guy that owns a building next door and a couple of people from the town um, because he's having, you know, various concerns and issues and people telling him to do stuff. And he's trying to get his building online. And, um, you know, a real big concern with getting his building online is that um, he needs certain things to make his building, you know, become he's sort of looking at like luxury apartments. And to do that, like his concern that I sat in on a meeting and advocated for him was he doesn't have enough power in the building and he's running into a lot of roadblocks. So the, the result of him not getting power in the building to us and to the neighborhood is then he can't do that. So if he can't do that and he gets frustrated with uh, people that are restricting him, whether it be the MGLD or the town or whoever, he could put a rooming house in there and have 20 bedrooms in a month. And we could be, you know, and that's not what, you know, many people consider desirable for the neighborhood. Everybody can have their own opinion, but I think in our neighborhood development and talking about things downtown, it's not illegal. It's perfectly within his right. And he's advocating to get some changes so that he can do things that are more in line with what we've talked about, which is retail on the bottom and some nice apartments up top. 
Um, but he's running into roadblocks. He's getting frustrated. You know, he did all that decontamination work. We've worked with him for five years and he hasn't been collecting rent. So I advocated for him. Um, the rest of it's really his business. Um, just, I, I attended that, I attended that meeting. So, uh, back to ZBA, you know, we just let him know, Hey, he's got a right of way. We've got a right of way. We haven't talked to anybody. We're doing arts and culture development downtown. Cause it was in the article. They mentioned that, you know, Hey, maybe you should do something with arts and culture. And it's like, yeah, you should talk to your neighbors. We're, we're like the number one leading authority in the, in, in the town on, on doing that in downtown. So the, the point of the letter was to, to get, to get us in the conversation. And so they have a meeting next week. Um, if you have any questions with the letter, I'll definitely answer them. Uh, but the point of the letter is to get us in the conversation and to put us on record immediately, right at the beginning. And we've asked for this conversation many, many times. And I've talked to, you know, town hall, various people and stuff and said, as soon as anything happens, we want to know. And I've communicated our needs, but I don't know that that communication made its way through to the developer or just quite frankly, it might not be the right time. They don't really care right now. And then they throw their plans out there. And then people like us write in and say, hey, look at me. So, so that's where Chris, we're at. Chris, what I don't remember is who did the letter go, go to? The letter went to uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Uh, and it went to David Hatfield, who's the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, yep. Amy Wall is on that committee. There's probably, I don't know, a handful of other people that are on there. Um, these are the same folks that I negotiated on our behalf to get our sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, no, no, I was I was just curious because I, you know, I don't know if it's also worthwhile to send in a, a letter to the same letter to McGrail or CC McGrail or no, it has been. It, it has, has been. been. The, 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 the proper the proper procedure is to send it to the chair of the zoning board of appeals. And the I have received confirmation from the ZBA. It has been distributed to their thing. I think we're on their agenda for next week. I, I don't know. They didn't ask me to go, but I'm assuming they're going to discuss that. If not, I, I pretty much, I think I'll be on the meeting and I'll read it into the record. Um, but it has been sent to their attorney and it has been excellent. sent to the developer okay. as yeah. well. Yeah. So we're on the books. Excellent. Because they definitely, the, the article was a little... Um, confusing to try and follow what their plans were. There was talk about not yeah. just the bank building that was the other building where the tailor was and then parking. So so there's a lot of impact in the general area. So the sooner we are plugged in with the plans uh, yeah. and the conversation, the better. Yeah, for sure. Tracy, Joy, Doug, Emory, anybody else? Yeah, so we're, we're in the conversation. We're doing what we're, I mean, this is basically what we have to do. Usually the developers come to the ZBA and the first time they come through, they just kind of throw a bunch of stuff at them and see what's going to stick and they see what the reaction is. That's the way it's been for the last 20 developments in town. I expect this one to be no different. All right, so that's uh, Zoning Board of Appeals item. Uh, next one, correspondence, correspondence with the Commission for Disabilities Issues. Uh, this has not happened yet. Uh, um, I When I, I have to prepare the agendas like 10 days in advance, um, I was anticipating that it would happen. Uh, I, once we get a little further along in the conversation and we get the KMA report, which talks about our accessibility stuff, um, I plan to make what I now have as an annual uh, voyage to the uh, Commission for Disabilities Issues to update them on what we're doing. Since we put our first plan for an ex uh, accessible entrance maybe two or three years ago, that was really the only, uh, well, not the only, but th that was one of the main critiques was that we hadn't talked to them. So since then I've established a relationship. I talked to them, I think about two times a year, definitely at least once um, and let them know what's going on. And since we have some new plans, I'll definitely include them on what our new plans are. And that's just, you know, part of being a good, a good building steward and a, and a good neighbor. So that, that will be pending coming up. I'll, I'll make sure we talk to them. Uh, the next item we can really skip, that's just uh, something that's on the list of stuff to do, placeholder, the front bunts. Uh, number thir the next item, building 1315, that's what I mentioned. I sat and advocated for the other building owner. Uh, window cleaning maintenance, uh, we don't have any money in our account right now, so we can't really pay any more bills uh, until we get some. Uh, but we had agreed to do that uh, at some point. Um, I inquired about uh, the roof on the building. Uh, and the way that this happened was the next item below at the fire alarm panel. I got some emails over the last year from DPW about the fire alarm panel and, oh, we're disabling it. We're doing this and we're doing that. All these things that were just illogical. Um, it, it, it sounded more like somebody else's conversation that had nothing to do with us. Uh, but I asked about this fire alarm panel that was being replaced because we need to be aware of everything going on in the building since we're doing major stuff. 
And apparently the fire alarm panel was budgeted last year through like capital planning um, and nobody told us and they, they budgeted and they paid for it and they're installing it. So that's great. The part that's not great is that we're looking at fire protection and sprinklers and stuff like that is that at, as a, at a minimum, we should have had a courtesy response of, hey, we're putting in the capital budget on behalf of the building, whatever. I mean, it's I don't even know how much it is. I don't imagine it's a lot of money. I mean, maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's 10,000. Either way, it got approved in last year's budget. But that just led me to the next question, which was the, when the fire alarm goes off, they usually call me and I come in and there's messes on the floor and they climb on the ceiling. And I've been told that the roof is trashed. Um, given all this infrastructure and other things that we're doing, it would behoove us to know the status of the fire alarm system and the status of the roof, because at some point it's going to need to be replaced and it's got to be on some sort of schedule. So I started asking questions about that. And also told them that, you know, we had talked potentially in fun, but maybe in reality, because I keep repeating it, that we'd love to see a rooftop deck up there someday. I know it sounds like way out there, but it's really not because when we, whenever the roof comes to be, that will be the time to either make or break it. Either the roof comes and it's fine or the, and, or the roof comes and they do it and they make it so that we can't do that. So we want to make sure that we have our options open, or at least I would like to think that. And I'd also like to know you know, am I going to get a call? Are we going to get a call and told next week that, hey, we have to shut everything down because there's a big giant hole in the building and, and, and money's not been approved. So there's, there's, you know, we've been working on improving our relationships as far as what's going on. And I just asked a lot of questions around that. And, um, and Ann seems to be getting me some answers. I don't have any info on the roof history. Um, when I asked about it, they said that the roof, the roof replacement was denied. And, and that's okay except for the fact that I didn't know that a roof replacement request went in, nor did we know, and we're the stewards of the building. Um, and I just want to get us keyed in on that stuff because we're doing a lot of stuff that's at that level and, and we should know. Uh, so that's that's it on um, building maintenance stuff. Any is questions that, on is, that? Is that the alarm that, or the, the beep? That, I shouldn't say alarm, but is that no. the beep you hear occasionally that goes off and then stops and then comes back and, yes. okay. That was going on during our entire meeting last time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and so and at one point there was like an override thing, and they had it open, and we overrode it. But I mean, we'd all talked about it openly when they when they came at me with it. I got these emails that were really kind of written like "stop screwing with the alarm," and I was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, and I and I, it just the approach, the, the way the communication was sent to me made me ask fifteen more questions. But yeah, that's what that is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Any more questions on anything to do with building maintenance? It's uh, kind of boring, but intricate. And I got answers if you need them. No, I'm more interested in the fire alarm. So we have a show coming up in October and I don't want the beep. So unfortunately, uh, due to the lack of communication and, uh, on this stuff and whatever, um, we can't really tackle that problem until there is a problem. So in theory, and I can I can I can send an email whether I get a response in a timely manner, is, you know, out there, and say, hey, did you replace the panel? I was told that it's being replaced soon, and that was probably three weeks ago. Um, if well, it maybe starts, you being, could share the info and give me a name, and then I could follow up to make sure that I don't get the beep during my art show in October. Okay, let's. Uh, yeah, I mean, why don't you do that? share the info sure. and I'll, I'll follow there, up. There's, 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 no real, yeah, there's no real there. info to share, but I'm happy to tell you, you can call Ann Wade and ask her. Ann Wade, Ann Ann Wade. Ann. call Ann Wade all day long and ask her. Okay. Um, and she'll tell you, she'll either tell you the panel was installed or it's going to be installed. And that's about the extent of the answer you're going to get. Um, maybe you'll get a better one, but I doubt it. Uh, it's either installed or not installed. And, and it, ha it ha was beeping the other day though. That's, that's, uh, no one had told me that. It was beeping the other day, yes? Yeah, it, all it, through the meeting, yeah. Okay. Is the thing open where you can like push it? I don't know the, what the thing is. The yeah, box right, in, right inside we, the right door? Right, let's, talk about, let's talk about it offline. Uh, we'll, we didn't we'll touch it anything. Out. We didn't, it, it, it started in the middle of the meeting and then stopped and then started up again all on its own. So it was very mysterious. When, when was the meeting, recently? Uh, the third, third, third Thursday July. in, um, August. no, in August, <laughs> okay. third, third Wednesday, third Wednesday in August. I'll tell you what, I'll, um, I'll send an email to Ann and I'll copy, uh, Joy, Kathy, if you want to and yeah, I'll just sure. say, yeah. Hey, we got a show going on. Hmm. What's going on? You know, did I it get no replaced? 
And really yeah. the only thing that we can do though, is if it starts beeping is you can just call them and then yep. they'll send somebody and I, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't really want to do that though. But yeah. anyway, let's move on. All right, so events. Uh, so next event we have is in October. We had some potential events in September. Uh, some deadlines weren't, uh, weren't able to uh, happen. Uh, so those disappeared. Uh, next event is, is, is I'm gonna throw it off to, uh, to you all. Uh, I'm excited for Creatures and Critters. Uh, I put it on our website, I, uh, not our website. I put it on our social media. I put it on, uh, where is it? And I put the, I put it on, yeah, I put the, the dates on the website. And I put it on social media, both Instagram and Facebook. Um, I talked to uh, Jamie, Jamie Gibbons, uh, because on the Arts Collaborative Facebook, you had a post pinned from last year. So I was having trouble finding it because a show from last year was pinned. So it was weird. Anyways, she didn't think she could fix it, but then she was able to fix it. So she fixed the uh, Arts Collab Facebook. And uh, I did everything that I can do on my end to get that shared. And I shared it personally, too, and I'll continue to do so. But uh, I'll throw the floor to you all to talk about it. All right, so we have 12 dates uh, booked in the month of October. And so far, I think we have 33 people registered. And uh, it's still kind of trying to come into, it's coming together with some posters and, and different types of uh, publicity. But yeah, we're moving on with it. Cool. Um, so, Hey, tell me, how did the pause thing happen? I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about that. And then when I read your media, it talked about being partnered with pause and I thought that was pretty smart. Yeah. Andrea set that up. She's got some good buddies who are in pause. So that's, that's like the whole separate exhibit for 10 bucks. People will buy the art right then and there, right off the wall. So that, all right. I didn't, uh, that's a separate exhibit. Well, yeah. Two exhibits in the, in the one show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, do you remember Esther Knoll? Yeah. She was the one who started Pause, right? Yep. Wow. I think like I was in fifth grade. <laughs> that like happened. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, so, all right. So Creatures and Critters, October, December, we got Holiday Acapella uh, and uh, Arts Collaborative. Are you guys going to have a sale? Yes, we are. The weekend, the first weekend in December. So it will be... Um, it will be, I'm just looking at the dates here, uh, Friday night and then Saturday. So 12-2 and 12-3. We haven't really finalized just how, you know, when on Friday and when on Saturday, but we've definitely picked that date. And I'm pretty sure we are not going to do Sunday, but that will all, um, we'll all put that together, uh, probably have conversations during during the month of October and start to finalize in early November, but definitely that weekend. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, any, anything else on that? Anyone? Okay. Um, next one I had here is I, I pushed uh, the Bring the Good show. Uh, I wanted to move that because uh, we're not going to be ready in any kind of capacity of the way that uh, we want it to be. Uh, so I pushed that uh, uh, to Friday, April 21st, 28th, and May 5th. Uh, assuming that there's no objections, uh, I'll continue to, uh, to work on that. Primary thing that's going on there um, that uh, is one is time. Um, it's kind of, you know, the January timeframe we know is kind of cruddy, but um, specifically to get a liquor license, you need a 90 day notice. And so if we were going to have beer and I've talked to idle hands about doing some stuff, if we were going to have any of that uh, it requires a 90 day notice to the town council and uh, I don't want to ask for special permission or rub up against any deadlines, but that basically means that I'd have to know everything now and be on their agenda in the month of September to do something in January. So by being, by moving something out to the spring, which um, I think is a better time frame, anyways, um, it'll also give adequate notice uh, to incorporate, um, you know, the, the beer things. And so there's two, two parts of that. There's a show. Um, and then there's uh, a comedy show that'll be mixed in with it with Paul D'Angelo. He committed to that last year. Uh, that show I'm going to run under what I call the Friends of the Albion Cultural Exchange will be the name of it. Um, so any monies collected uh, will go back to ACE um, for, uh, you know, any revenue that's created through that. And so I'm going to group it. That's what I'm going to start calling things um, uh, at this point uh, for, for that type of thing. So 
Um, so, I don't know if there's any objections, but I just want no, to. No, I just have a couple of questions. So, what about Art Bloom? So, you moved bring the good from the winter to the spot where where I I don't know maybe we're not doing Art Blooms, but what about Art Blooms? Uh, well, nobody has proposed uh, an Art Blooms date. Nobody's gotten behind it. Nobody's submitted a request for that. That uh, that would require someone. Uh, you know, the standard way that we do things on the, uh, this committee for the last eight years is. Somebody uh, puts a proposal out there and asks to reserve the time, uh, and okay. they usually put a proposal out with that. And um, what do you call it? And then you know we all talk about it and you know how it makes sense and how we manage those things. And, and there's a little bit of dialogue further down about just you know how we plan events. That's been like an open thing, especially since we've upgraded, or not upgraded, but you know upgraded the building a lot. Um, so currently there is nothing on the schedule beyond um, unless somebody brings a proposal uh beyond holiday acapella uh and the, and the arts collaborative uh sale date uh so at the moment there's there's nothing on the schedule okay and so that's what you want bring the good to be in april yeah and that actually um probably you know april the beginning of april is when a bloomy type thing usually happens but uh right. yeah so that would be before that so 21, 28, and five, that would be leave the whole first part of April and, and March for any of that. So we can talk about the next arts collaborative meeting too, to see what people are you know thinking about for the spring. I don't think people just haven't gotten past these first couple, these next couple of events. So we can talk about that and see who's yeah. up for what. Cause we have done, we've been doing different kinds of shows in this in the spring and um I, my brain's fried here. I, I forget the one we just had, as a matter of fact, in the spring, um, which was very successful. Uh, but we should uh, we should be definitely looking towards the spring and see what folks want to do. So then maybe we could do Art Blooms in May. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe. Take the whole month of May. You could absolutely do that. I mean, I, I put I blew this through Cinco de Mayo, and, and my rationale on that for this was the timing made sense, but um, it was also, I was like, all right, if I get the beer guys there, I can end the show on Cinco de Mayo, um, what do you call it? And that's like a beer holiday. That's the extent of it. All right, uh, we good there, moving on? Yeah, okay. Uh, this item may have been on last time and um, it's just the uh, podcast that I did with the history of uh, ACE with uh, State Representative uh, Kate Lipper-Garabedian. It was uh, uh, 